Okay. Hi everyone, welcome to the Zira overview session. So we will try to cover the basics of Zira. What is it required as a business analyst for the role to play and how we can make use of this uh, Zira as a tool from our day-to-day -day, uh, project management or the day-to-day -day typical implementation perspective. Let me get started with, so um, once we get access to Zira, there are chances sometimes we might have to start creating a project or the Scrum board or Kanban board from the scratch. Majority of the times, the board might be already created or might be created by the Zira admin. When you say Zira admin, there are two levels of admin. One is at the project level. The second is at the entire overall Zira level. So uh, let's suppose I am the Zira admin for the entire organization. Right? The Shipra might be the admin for her project. Like that, Sudha might be admin for her project. Suma is admin for her project. Like that. So each project level, there will be one admin or couple of admins. And the entire Zira organization level, there will be one or two or few of folks, key folks who will be playing the organization level admin. So in my experience, I was majority of the times I was working for a banking client So, being a banking client, they have a lot of restrictions, limitations. So I never got a chance to create a project or create a board from the scratch while I was working with the banking client. But so that's where I started making use of this free tool or free version of Zira. Each of us, we can start creating our own free version of Zira, as you can see. It is, I created this Colas is my Zira space at Lashin.net. So I started creating it and I started creating my own projects, which I use for the discussions, conversations like this and for my own learning as well. Okay. So up to 10 users, the Zira is free. So even if you have access at your organization level, feel free to create your own Zira space so that you can learn, you can experiment, you can explore as much possible from your side. Okay. So let's get started with creating a project. So here we see the button blue color create that will help us to create only the issues, whether it is epic, user story, task, bug or anything. So if in case we want to create a new project, we have to go to projects, create project. So how we get to know whether we have the access to create a project or not in the projects menu. These are all the recent projects with the view all projects. Plus we have one additional option for create a project. If we are admin or if you have admin access, you will have that option create project. But if not, if you are a team member or a scrum master or a business analyst or what are the role if you had been tagged to your project, you might not be having this create project option. So if in case you don't have that, which means you need to reach out to your project, I mean Zira admin to get a new project created. Okay, are you good till now? Yes, yes. Okay, so let's take a look at how to create a project. And there are few small basics, but really important aspects which we need to consider whenever we are creating or even when we are requesting to create a new project. Either of the case, we need to take care of few basics and the key important aspects. So as you can see here, there are different project templates. So we need to figure out which type of project we have to create. So the most common is the software development. We have like Kanban, Scrum, and uh, as you can see, the, the premium level, top level planning, cross team planning, these are available for premium customers you can check with your organization are we having a premium subscription or are we having any enterprise subscription so our organization we have an enterprise subscription which means we have this additional access to the top level planning and cross team planning so these are the additional things right now i'm using a free version so i don't have access but i will explain the other things so recently the zira atlassian started the product discovery to you all being the business analyst, you might want to focus on the discovery part as well. What is that? The creating a roadmap or from the 
uh, identifying the requirements, defining the goals of the organization, and from that goal, how to split that overall project or initiative into the requirements and take it to your respect to agile team. So you might want to explore the product discovery as well, right? And then the basic core functionality of Zira, when the Zira is started, it is a bug tracking tool. So these are the different project templates within software development we can make use to create our project. So we will Today we will go through the Scrum because there is a most common thing which we all might be using or we all might be working. Let me give a walkthrough of what the Scrum project looks like. Once we click on that Scrum, we have that uh, the, the functionality or the definition or the description of it. So it is telling that plan uh, upcoming work in a backlog, organize cycle into sprint, understand the team's velocity. So which means by creating a Scrum project, we can manage our backlog, we can work in the sprints and we can make use of the agile metrics. These are the different default functionalities from the Scrum project. And they're just giving some definition. So you can take a look at it. These are the default issue types. These are the default workflows. Epic, story, bug, task, and subtask, and the workflow, a simple basic to do in progress and done. These are the default templates coming up whenever we are creating a new project. Right? So first step, we selected which type of project. Then here we got the definition of what is Scrum, what is the default issue types and the workflows coming up. If required, we can change the template by going back. If not, this is what we, the template we want to create. Let's go ahead and make use of the template. The next thing is two options. The first step is that choosing a template, what type of template we want to use. The second, type, second step is a project type. Team, there are two types of projects, team managed and company managed. Team managed, as they mentioned, it is set up and maintained by your own team, which means it is like a closed loop a closed project, only your team members and whoever created, anyone within the team can set up and maintain and they can organize it. It will be accessible only to your project. It is your private space. Outside team members, let's suppose Shipra created her own team managed project. Even though we all of us are in the same workspace, we won't be able to access Shipra's team managed project because it is rest <coughs> restricted or limited to their own respective team. That's it. Right. So they have the permissions which they can set up and it will have only essential features, which means only the basic reporting and it will show only your project related issues. If in case you have to link your issue with other project or you have a dependency or you want to have comprehensive reports or the metrics, the team managed project is not suitable. Right? It is just for your own uh, sake. If in case you want to create, you can go ahead and create a team managed project, but 95 or more than percent team managed projects are not used across the organizations. So what is most common is company managed. So what is a company managed? Your Zira admin will be the one who will set up and maintain. They will create, they will maintain, they will organize the space and everything. We need to provide what should be our project name and what should be the project key. We will discuss in the next step what is the key. And this is what the company managed project is the what we have to or we will be making use across the organizations. 95 or more than that percentage for a scrum project right so what does it has it has all the standard configurations and uh you can access pull in the issues from other projects as well especially for the dependencies and the all the agile reports will be available we can make use of it we are good till now the team managed and company managed Yes. Okay. So yeah. I'm going ahead and creating a selecting a company managed project. Right. So now comes the third step. 
So first step is choosing a template. Second step is, step is choosing a type. So even before creating a project, we still have option to go back and either change the template or change the type. But the moment we give the project name and key and click on next, it will be really tough to change the template or the type of the project. Yeah. So this is the step where we need to take a decision whether you want to go ahead with the Scrum and company managed project or you want to change anything. This is the time we need to go back and we can change, adjust and come to this step. Otherwise, if we are sure this is the template and the type, the next step is go ahead and create a project. Right. So I'm giving a name, BA Club Project. I'm asking, hey, what is the name of the project? I'm the Zero Admin. You are all the team members. You reached out to me asking, Satish, you want, can you help us creating a Scrum company managed Scrum project? with this project name. The next step I will ask is, what you want to have the project key? Here, if you see by default, automatically, the first alphabets of the project name was taken and it automatically, the tool automatically recommended BCP. I can still ask us, hey, folks, let me know what key you want to use. You can even give the key name as well. Let's suppose I can say X, Y, Z. I can say A, B, C. I can say test project. It's up to us. It should not exceed 10 characters. Okay. So I, I just give that uh, test project. Key is up to us. But that is the main important thing. More than your project name, the key is important thing here. Reason? Whenever you have a dependency or whenever you have to communicate to other teams within your project, right? my project key is this and the issue is this one. So you need to pass on your project key so that they will, for the reportings, for the metrics, for the dashboards, for your issues, everything, the project key plays a very, very, very key role. So, Make sure you define what project key you want to use and you need to communicate or convey that information to your Zira admin. They will create that project with that project key. Good. Are we good till now? Yes. We are still at the project creation phase. So once we finalize, yes, let's click on next. The moment we click on next, a new blank project will be created for us. And here it is asking, you want to add anything along with this? Yes. For free Atlassian, I opted two products. One is Zira software and second is Confluence. That's the reason it is asking, you want to create a project pages as well along with the project, Zira project. I'm choosing yes. And if anything is required, I mean, I can use the name of my confluence space. If not, automatically it will create. I'm going ahead, clicking on continue. Right. Right. So this is our project name, BA Club project, the software project. And right? you are in a company managed project. Right. And as you can see, the project key, BCP, this is, and the board, the BCP board. Everything, it will be referring to the project key. So BCP board and uh, the moment we start creating issues, it will start BCP1, BCP2, BCP3 like that. So everywhere, the BCP will be fixed. So whenever you are now interacting with other projects or other teams, you need to say that ours is a BCP. Our project key is BCP. I will show how we, when we go to the reports or the metrics, I will show how this BCP will play the key role. Good. So being a default project, nothing is there. It's a blank. So it is saying that get started in the backlog. So let's go to backlog. You can see here it is a blank. It's showing BCP sprint one because it's a scrum. Assuming it is assuming we need to create the sprint. We can add the dates and everything. But, but even before going there, we have to take a look at the timeline. What is the timeline? This is your project specific 
roadmap where you can define your epics and you can visualize the flow of your project the progress everything you can take a look at the timeline view you will get to know what or how that project looks like and the plan you can once we start creating a sprint once we start creating a release once we start creating the epics and uh, issues under it and once we start creating the dependencies everything will start visualizing in the timeline view okay so as a business analyst or as a manager or as a scrum master or as a coach whatever the role we are playing the timeline view plays very important role to help us visualize how is our plan going on where are we on the road map how the progress is coming up everything we can visualize using this timeline screen here we have week wise month wise quarter wise or even today if in case we can do that and months quarters it is up to us based upon your release plan right if it is quarterly release maybe you might want to take a look at quarter but ours we are doing a monthly release so we might want to take a look at month wise plan or month wise visualization that's how based upon your project context you can set that view what and how we want to take a look at it good and this is where we can start creating the epics so what is the epic anyone what's your definition of epic hello yes please uh -huh. requirement okay mm -hmm. yes so once we define that high level requirement in the form of epics that's when we'll start creating the child in the form of user stories by splitting into smaller groups or smaller user stories smaller chunks right oh how to create epics within zira there are multiple ways first thing right now we are in the timeline screen here we already have that option create epic click on create epic login registration of the customers i'm just taking one online shopping cart for example just for easy discussion i just gave that login registration of the customers categories of the items then payment gateway then shipping functionality i'm just giving some uh, random names right faqs and customer support this might not be the way but i'm just just for our discussion i'm just creating a simple names and simple uh, epics don't consider this as the standard of the format right so now as you can see the project key which we defined is where your issue numbering sequence will come one two three four five bcp hyphen will be default whatever the issue type we create the next numbering sequence will continue based upon the last or the latest issue id right you got it so next time when you reach out to uh, some other project let's suppose now this is amazon shopping cart for example so the payment gateway is handled by amazon pay for example so you are talking to the amazon pay team you will say that hey for our bcp3 epic we want your help to integrate the amazon pay as a payment gateway so you will be using this issue ids as a interaction point and you can you might share this payment gateway issue link or issue id with that amazon pay team that's how they will locate that okay yes for amazon shopping cart we need to work on this bcp3 integration right got it so that's how we make use of the project key and the issue id so issue id plays a very key role within issue id the project key 
So BCP will be like fixed throughout any issue ID you create. Any issue you create, BCP will be fixed. That's the reason that project key, when you're creating the project, plays a very, very, very key role. Good. So five epics I created. So as you can see, it is just, I'm just giving the name of the epic, nothing, no description, no priority, no assignee, no timelines, nothing. I just created it. So this is a dummy epic. We just created just for the namesake. This is what majority of the times it might happen. Your client or your uh, reporting manager or your product owner or manager, whoever it is, they might say that, hey, we define the epics in your project. Go ahead and get the work done by your team. If you are the business analyst in this context, and the client manager, I'm saying that, hey, I created five picks. Go ahead and get this work done by the team. Will you be able to get it done? I'm the client or I'm the project manager. I'm asking. Hey, these are the five epics I created in this project. You as a business analyst, go and talk to your team, get these five epics done. Will you be able to? There has to be users to be added first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You work with the team and create the user story. Let me take a step back and ask the question in a different way. Will any of us, including me, be able to define user stories by taking this as an epic? No. Why no? We have the epic name, epic ID. What is stopping us? Uh, the overall... Uh a description and the priority and everything is exactly there. exactly nothing is there this is just a dummy epic id or epic just for namesake it is created in the tool nothing is there nothing is there so we need to make sure before giving any commitment or before saying that yes we will get it done you need to make sure it's not just the epic is defined in the system whether the acceptance criteria or the description or the priority or all the required details are defined or at least we have the information maybe in an email or a word or any shared point or somewhere so that at least it is not there we should be able to add to the respective epics right so we need to be make sure like we have that required information before going ahead and starting working on with the team right so what is it required? Yes. Uh, let me open that epic BCP1. So, SN is not there. The priority, it is a default priority. And as you can see, nothing is there. The description blank. Yes. So, how we do that? When we are adding the epics using this default way of create epic, it is not asking us to do anything. It is just creating five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, continuously, that's it. As you keep on giving the epic names and pressing enter, it is creating the, in the tool. So make sure not to use this approach. Even if you're using, make sure the required information is provided or input or updated within that respect to issue. It could be any issue type, not only the epic. If there's any issue type, if you create using this create epic or create issue, this is how it will just ask the name. That's it. No other details will be asked. There is a default functionality of the tool. Right? Now, here we have the other create. Let me click on that create. If I say epic as issue type, we are talking about epic, right? Let's talk about epic. Epic as issue type. Now, let's see. Okay. Because it is a default uh, project, it is not having a budget of the details. But our project, what we do is like 
even the description the priority and the team we had made it as a mandatory fields so that it's not just creating a epic we can't go away you need to provide those details to the respect to issue whatever we are creating right so now i am creating uh, a return of refund of the items purchased i'm just adding another epic so we are still talking about epic so the summary here we can change the status to do in progress and done by default it should be to do this any issues initial status upon creation parent right now we don't have a parent mechanism at the epic level so we will skip that part description this is where we can add the description we can provide the description to the respect to epic right so how do we define the description So this is the issue epic type return or refund of the items purchased what could be the description of that the expected behavior mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay we can, we can update the expected behavior mm. for that and uh, we can give additional information uh, mm -hmm like how that can be achieved that thing mm -hmm. also we can mention i believe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that is the uh, that will give the uh understandable picture of that uh, particular issue we have updated under epic yes thanks thanks for that typically we type in or we copy paste or we take a reference of the existing uh, epic or the documentation anything we have and we can do that recently atlassian uh, they started making use of the ai functionality artificial intelligence within the tools right so here if you can see that uh, icon let atlassian intelligence assist your writing oh so, yes write with ai or select from below if you want to brainstorm you can do that or if you want to use atlassian intelligence we can do that acceptance criteria the epic right okay uh, let me change it acceptance criteria for the return we find purchased items. I just gave one statement. It is giving that five specific acceptance criteria pointers. It might be the same or might not be the same. At least we are getting some help. We are getting some assistance which can help us save the time. No need to do everything from the scratch, right? So here, maybe our uh, return policy might be 15 days. Let's just update it. And uh, the proof of purchase could be something else. So just update that point. So, but at least we are getting that the basic information with the help of the AI tool. Right? No need to, we could have typed the same in 10 15 minutes instead just by giving one sentence of acceptance criteria for the return or refund purchase items we started getting the acceptance criteria right so it's not the same we can copy it or we can directly insert it or we can still tell ai what to do next add Five more acceptance criteria for the same API. Let's see what it will say. 
it's giving i guess the same but um, additional pointers to the app acceptance criteria i guess it might give the same thing okay looks like it is not it but you're getting the point right at least we can start making use of the tool with the ai functionality so now if i say insert what it will do it directly went ahead into the description right now again i will say list down definition of turn return or refund purchased items okay looks like it is giving the same thing this card but uh let's suppose we ourselves added the pointers from our side we can still use this summarize or improve or brainstorm like this so we can if we already have the information we can summarize it or we can improve it or we can rewrite it or we can ask the tool to do the ch change of tones or change of the current content as well so this is how we can start making use of the ai functionality within this is this functionality is available for all issue types not just for epics right so all issue types we can make use of this uh, ai functionality within the description as one of the field right we are good till now so i'm changing the priority so how do we define the priority based upon the inputs we got from the the business owner or, or the product owner or the client whoever is setting the context you will get to know what should be the priority or sometimes we ourselves also might be involved in that discussion accordingly we will choose what should be the priority we can define it or we can update it and if in case you already have the teams defined we can pick and choose which team right now i don't have the team defined so right now it is not giving up but the next thing is labels you can add labels is a free form we can have multiple labels for any given issue type we will discuss once we go to the user stories but this labels function uh, field is available for all issue types okay so yes we created the issue in the bc so the next issue is coming as pcp6 so are you good till now the epic description and the the how we can make use of the direct create epic on the timeline versus how we can create using the create button yes Atish. okay now the next thing let's suppose all the six epics we have all the description acceptance criteria priorities and everything the next step what we typically do we start working with the team and start creating the smaller user stories how we can create the user stories there are multiple ways we can create the user stories first thing come here let's suppose login the moment we keep the mouse here we got the plus icon right so create child issue is one of the way to create a child issue it could be any type so let me click on it by default the user story is coming up along with that we have bug and task major of the times we might start with a user story right so let's suppose log in with username and password right what happened bcp7 is created and the progress or the workflow by default it start created as to do now next next is login with otp identification login with fingerprint identification so 789 got created as a child issues 
for BCP1. So what does that mean? The epic BCP1 is a parent and 7, 8, 9 are the ch child and all the child, the current status of the progress is in the to do, which is a default initial flow. If you can see under BCP2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there is no line or anything, but under BCP1, we have a small line, gray color. We can see that I just uh, kept the mouse there. It is showing to do three out of three, which means the current progress of BCP1 as a parent epic is it has three child issues. It could be anything. User story bug task, it could be anything. Under that, we have three issue types, issues, and all the three are in to do. Okay. This is one way of creating the child issues under the epic and how we can see the current progress or the current status of the overall epic. The other way is that again by going to the default create type, click on create. Here instead of epic, we will select issue, um, issue type as story. I will give the summary as forgot username. And here I'm coming up and I'm saying acceptance criteria for forgot username. It is giving different uh, things. See user interface, how user interface should be. What should be the input validation, the recovery process, or error handling, assistance options? All this information is given by the AI. If in case we are okay with that, we can make use of it. If not, yes, we can change it and we can do that. Let's go ahead and insert it for the time being. I'm clicking on create. Let's see what happens. Your issue BCP10 has been created but is not currently visible because it does not match your board filter. Right. BCP10, the new issue was created but it is not visible in the current board of the timeline view. What's the reason? Why BCP789 are visible? Why BCP10 is not visible? For BCP10. We have not selected parent. Exactly. The parent is not selected. So ideally, I could I should I'm supposed to choose the parent because it is not a mandatory field. I skipped that or maybe I forgot it. I just created it. And that's the reason the BCP10 is not visible on the current screen, but it will be visible in the backlog. Let's go back to go to the backlog for the moment. And we, here we can see four issues, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All of them are in to-do. One small difference is here the purple color epic as a parent is visible or already linked. For forgot username, it is not. So here we have the option to add epic. So I'm clicking on that. We have the list of recent epics which we created. I'm selecting it. Now, if you go to timeline, even BCP 10 also will be related or it will be connected with the BCP 1 as a parent. Right? Get good? The other way to create issue is like come here in the now we are moving to the backlog screen from the timeline screen here we have backlog the, all the pro issues which we created are displayed or is visible in the backlog not under sprints and only user type issues are displayed here the epics are not displayed epics will be displayed only in the timeline screen or only when you are linking 
it as a parent to one of the other issue type user story task and bug otherwise epic will not be displayed in any other screen within the zira are you clear with that the difference when where the epic will be displayed versus where the other issue types will be displayed yes okay now here we have create issue create issue so if i click on create issue here it will go and create the issue in the backlog let's see what happens i um, uh, forgot password again the parent is not linked right so we need to make sure if in case you are not the moment we take a look at it if this field is blank which means the epic parent link is not there so the moment you take a look at it i will get a question satish how how are you identifying that this issue is not linked or tagged to epic hey, this column will be blank just take a look at it you will get to know no need of asking or no need of opening one by one issue type or no need of any jql or anything right just by looking at it you will get to know directly right so this is another way we can create a issue the next is within the sprint itself we can create majority of the times by default the issues will be created in the backlog but if we are during the sprint planning or during the backlog refinement of that respect to sprint we can directly click on that create issue there and we can uh what do you say Password, for example, that issue will be created directly within that respect to sprint. Again, the parent, so we need to make sure that parent is tagged or parent is linked. So that's the reason at the organization level, they will make sure the parent is made as a default field so that the team who is creating that issue will not miss or will not skip that functionality. Good till now. Are you going slow, fast? Yeah, good, good, Shati. Okay. So till now we discussed three ways we can create a user story or child issue. The another way is like open that parent BCP one. I'm again opening that BCP one. Here we have that. Again, here within the parent, we have that add a child issue. We need to choose which type of it. We said password. No. Um, we said password using mobile number. So, this way, what happens is already the pcp1 as a parent is there so within the parent we are creating a child issue so nothing to worry if you go back to the uh, timeline it's not refreshed but if you go back to the timeline that issue child issue will be by default displayed because no need to explicitly link we are already creating it under the parent so no need to explicitly link automatically it will be linked it will be tagged to that respective parent Right, so there are four ways we can create a child issue. Along with this, there is another way which some organizations might be using. What is it? Let me open the create screen. Import issues. What is it? Import issues. We can make use of the bulk create using a CSV file. We need to choose a CSV file where sometimes what happens is even before using the uh, Zira as a tool or even before coming to the team level, this epics, user stories or the issues, everything might be discussed and defined within an Excel or within a document. So at that time, we might get it out. Do I read if already there, instead of copy, paste, let's suppose 100 user stories are already defined in the Excel. Do we have to manually copy paste one by one? No. 
we can we have that option of bulk create we need to uh, do the setting of that csv file we need to map the respective field of what's the excel uh, uh the csv file column name versus what is the zero column name or the field name we need to we need to map them by values once it is done all the 100 issues will be imported or created within the tool so no need to manually create every time right so some companies they might be using this approach if in case uh, they already have the information discussed and detailed in a, either a word document or excel we but for the tool we need to give input the csv file once it is done we can import all the issues into the respective tool no need to create everything manual so this is the fifth type we can create the issues so with this approach we can even create epics child everything within this one single approach Okay. Now let's quickly start taking a look at the sprints. So right now we are in the backlog screen. This is a scrum project, which means with the assumption we are going for a sprint. So how do we get to know whether you have the create sprint uh, the start sprint access or not right now i am on the backlog screen here you can see create sprint right the moment when i click on it what happened bcp sprint 2 got created again i clicked on it bcp sprint 3 got added so the new sprints are getting created with the blank nothing nothing will be there all the issues will be in the backlog itself right so you need to cross check whether you have the option or the uh, access to create the sprint or not then start sprint once as you once you have the sprint planning you should be having the access to the start sprint majority of the times the scrum master who is playing the role of scrum master at the organization or at the team level they will be having the access for creating the sprint and start the sprint so if in case if in case you don't have the access to both of these either you need to get the uh, access activated or we need to ask someone to help you to create the sprints and to start the sprint and it is not just starting the sprint you might not even have option to complete the sprint as well both start and complete will go together so you need to uh, make sure to get it done right now let's assume i'm not going into the details of sprint planning the prioritization backlog refinement story estimates i'm not discussing any of it but what is it required to use the tool for your sprint planning let's assume we have the issues everything in the backlog now during the backlog refinement or during the sprint planning you finalize that story seven eight nine and uh, okay seven eight nine should go into sprint one so what do we do we have the issues in the backlog right now it is only six issues but what if you have 100 issues how do we map the issues to the sprint come here bcp7 here we have three dots click on it move to the first functionality is move to you want to move into any of the sprints here we created three sprints it is a tool is asking which sprint you want to use or move if not within the sprints whether you want to move into top of the backlog yes maybe for the next sprint this is the priority so we want to keep it to the top of the backlog or you want to uh, move it to the bottom of the backlog we don't want to do this right now so let's move it to the bottom of the backlog or move up or down one step you can do any of these just by clicking on these three dots not only that we can add a flag if in case you want to have any follow-up or any uh, raise a risk or anything or you can change the assignee change the priority change the parent or you can even split the issue 
worst case, if you fail, this is not required or this is not relevant or created by mistake, we even have the delete option. Majority of the cases, the delete option might be disabled, which means once you create it, we won't be able to delete it. We can mark as not required to implement or something like that, but we might not be able to delete the issue uh, based on the organization settings. Right. So how do we do it? If in case you have to move the issues to the respect to sprint, I'm moving sprint one. We can even drag and drop any of the case, any of the way it works. We are discussing different ways. Drag and drop is one thing, or just selecting and moving to that respect to sprint in another way. This is how we can plan or pull the stories into that respect to sprint from the backlog. Same is the case. Let's assume uh, the client was mentioning hey, the fingerprint authentication we might not be able to do in Sprint 1. Let's plan for some other time. Move to top of backlog. It will go back. Right? Or I might want to move to Sprint 2. Yes. Just by this one single option we can do wherever we want. I'm again moving back to sprint one. And sprint one. Here, good. This is how we can move the issues across the sprints from the backlog or within the back, or within the sprints as well. We can move it across. Drag and drop or using these options to move to that respect to sprint or within the backlog. I'm just updating the story points just for the time being. And let's assume we are starting the sprint or oh, before going to the start sprint. Any questions? <clears throat> anything you want to ask? Or anything you have to you want me to cover? Here also uh, story point it is more or how it will be different. Um, sorry, can you come again? The story point? A one story point is many hours. Ah, uh, we are not going into that logic. <laughs> so it is up to us. What are the approach you are following? Whether it is a one story point is equal to these many hours or one story point is equal to one product today or what are the logic or the approach you are following? You can go ahead and follow. Because the moment we start that discussion, that itself will take its own time. So there's a reason we are not explicitly discussing about it. But once you finalize that story point, you can update that numbers in the story points field. Okay. The next thing, three fields are there. I'm not, I haven't started the screen, but I'm showing three fields are there or three uh, icons gray blue and green so the zero is all about the visualization the icons the color coding so we need to if we start making use of it that will help us like anything so now if someone comes and asks what's your total plan for your respective sprint you are about to start your sprint bcp sprint one what's your sprint capacity or the what's a Estimates of your issues. Three issues, estimate six. Here it is giving the tool. Along with that, it is telling six story points are in the not started. The gray is not started. Blue is in progress, zero. Green is completed, zero. So just by looking at the color coding itself, we should be able to tell us even without opening the issues or even without taking a look at let's suppose we have 30 issues which means the screen the number of issues scroll even we need to scroll down to take a look at the, all the issues for example then no need to look at each and every issue just by looking at these three columns or how many are columns in your respect to project or spring you will get to know what's your current status or what's overall status versus current Right, so 
the color coding is really important which helps us and this green uh, flag type of uh, bookmark type of thing is a user story and that tick mark is a blue tick mark is a task and red circle thing is a bug so just by looking at it you'll get to know OTP issue with OTP generation. I just created just for the visualization, right? By looking at it, we'll say, hey, four issues are there. Out of this four, three are stories, the fourth is a bug, and the fifth one is a task, for example. Right? it. Okay. For example, right. so out of five issues, by looking at the color coding, we will get to know how many, what type of issues we have created or we are having in our respective sprint or respective project. Good. Now I'm clicking on starting sprint. The tool is giving me a warning saying that issue BCP 12 does not have a value for the estimate field. Values entered after the start of the sprint will be treated as a scope change. Let me cancel this and go back. Here we can see BCP 12, 14 and 15 are having blank, but the warning we got only for BCP 12. Why? The default zero the current free version of Zira we are using, it is not considering the estimate for the bug and the task. So in case, in case your project level, if in case you are, your teams are estimating the bug and your teams are estimating the task as well, what is it? You have to make it as a mandatory fail as per your requirement. Otherwise, the default Zira tool will not be considering the estimate or will not ask or prompt to provide the estimates for the bug and the task. It is up to your organization, up to your project. You need to take a decision whether you are taking the, whether you're considering the estimates or the story points for bug and task. You need to take a decision and accordingly, you need to do the required customization. Right. So I am estimating this as one story point. Okay. So now seven. Automatically the point got updated, right? Seven. I'm again going back to start sprint. See, five issues will be included in the sprint. And required fields are marked with an asterisk. What is the required field? Sprint name, duration, start date, and end date. Sprint name, it is a default tool given sprint name the project code plus the sprint one, sorry, sprint one, we can change it. We can change it however we want. It is up to us. Right. We can let the tool specific format or we can change the sprint name as well. And duration, as per scrum guide, typically it, should, it could be between one week to four weeks, or sometimes it could be custom. Custom is like it is up to us. When is your start? When is your end? It is up to you, to the team. But the default may assume the tool is assuming it is a two-week sprint, and assuming it is a current date. It is at uh, some other time zone, not Indian time zone. That's why it is showing a different time. And the end date based upon two weeks, automatically the end date is calculated. So if I go and change the start date as Monday, suppose, because it's the weekend, so we are not starting sprint on today. Let's assume you're starting the sprint on 6th. The end date automatically got updated to 20th. Right? And here, this is where we can define the sprint goal. Okay, so um, login authentication for the 
shopping cart. I'm just giving a sprint goal just for the discussion. I'm just going ahead and clicking on start. Are you good? Anything we want to discuss before we start the sprint? We are not going into the uh, the functionality details or anything. We are just focusing on the tool specific thing, right? So how we are defining the user stories, how we are doing the estimates, how we are calculating the capacity or velocity, those details we are not going in the current session. I'm just focusing on the usage of the tool perspective. That's it. Yeah, um, so far so good. Thanks. Okay, okay. So I'm clicking on start. The moment we click on start, what happened? Active sprint, I forgot to show that, but active sprint, uh, we got uh, uh, automatically activated and it is showing the sprint name and the sprint goal. So what are the sprint goal we defined? And 10 days are remaining. See, the start date is 6th May, Project projected end date is 28th May. We might get it out today's 4th May. Satish gave us 6th May and click on start sprint. Why the tool allowed? Yes. Tool is not doing that validation. We can go ahead and give the start date. Any future date, we can go ahead and do it. And the end date also, it is the tool is taking as projected end date. It is a projected. It's not the actual. Which means don't assume that 20th may automatically by 7 5 a.m the sprint will get completed no no we ourselves whoever is playing the role of scrum master whoever is having the access to complete the sprint they should come and they should click on complete sprint i'm just clicking on it we need to come and click on that complete sprint only then only then the sprint will be completed so the way how we have start sprint complete create sprint access, same is the case. We need to cross check for the complete sprint access as well. If you don't have access to complete sprint, which means you don't have the access, either you need to take help of someone to get that sprint completed in the tool, or you need to get the access activated for you to be able to complete sprint. All the three comes together, create sprint, Start sprint, complete sprint. These are the three functionalities which typically will be aligned to the individual who is playing the role of a scrum master. So we need to go and ask your Jira admin to tag your ID or tag your name to the scrum master role in the Jira tool. Only then you will get the access. Otherwise, you can do everything else like creating the issue, prioritization, doing the disk, uh, definition, updating the issues, everything you can do, only the create sprint, start sprint, complete sprint, only these three things you won't be able to do. Good. Now, uh, uh, as we are in the active sprint, let me show the new functionality. See, group by earlier, it is not there. Here, now they recently started group by, whether you want to group by assigning or whether you want to group by epic, whether you want to group by projects or none, it is up to us. So during your daily standup or during your discussions, you can say hey, group by SNE. So your team members will be there. Let me show. Uh, this is assigned to me. This is assigned to here. Yeah. To Priya, using to Arun, right? So, what happened the moment we select group by SNE? My name has one issue, Arun's name has one issue, Priya's name has two issues. So, I can go ahead like this. Hey, Satish, what's the update of your issue? You are working on B67. What's the update? Arun, what's your update? Priya, what's your updates? Hey, one issue is not at, uh, as picked up by anyone in the team who would like to take it up. Right. 
this way we can get the grouping and we can get the view which will help us to track the progress and to have the discussion as well within the team. Then another new functionality is insights. This is not available in the Zira server, Zira data center, but this is started made available in the Zira cloud. So the moment we click on the insights, the sprint level insights, the sprint name, it is giving the view your sprint health and progress towards your goal. The sprint name, any flag, if you, in case you are flagged any issues, it will display here. The sprint progress, 0% done, 0% in progress, 100% not started, it will show here. And to do, what's the current progress? Current sprint total seven out of seven, everything is to do. All right. So someone come and ask, hey, what's the progress of your sprint? Just come to this active sprint, click on insights. Here it will show all the progress. Let me just for discussion. Okay. Nothing is done. 43% in progress, 57% not started. And it is showing in the blue because blue is in progress. Green is done. Gray is to do. So it is starting to showing and the sprint burned down. No need to go even to the report section. Here itself, they started showcasing the sprint burned down and epic progress. This could be more, uh, what do you say, more in interest for you as a business analyst. Let's assume for your respect to sprint, you planned stories from three epics, three different epics for that respect to sprint, right? It will show the progress of each epic, not the overall epic, not for the BCP one as an epic altogether. No, the stories or the scope of the current sprint within that epic, it will display here. Which means overall seven story points are planned for this epic BCP one out of which three points are in progress, four points are in to do. It nothing is done, zero percent done. Right. So oh, let me quickly go to backlog just for a moment. I will. What does it mean? Okay, so I tag the issues with the different epics. Now let's come back to active sprints. Insights. Okay, I know because those are not having an estimate. So now let me change for one of it. Insight also. Okay, here customer support. Sorry. See? The sprint is working towards two epics. It started reflecting two epics. So does that mean uh, are we completing, targeting to complete both these epics within the sprint? No, that's not the information it is giving here within the planned scope, what is the current progress of those two respective epics? That is what this insights is showing up. The sprint level progress, sprint burn down, any issues which are is flagged or marked and the scope of the epics which are planned for that respective sprint. That is what is, we can just everything, all the information we can get just by the insights screen or insights option within the current active sprint screen itself no need to even go to reports this is made available with the cloud version of zira are you good with the insights yeah 
any of you already started using this insights or any other functionality like this in the cloud version? Um, no, so there's not me. Okay. So you can start making use of it. That definitely helps if in case you're already in the cloud, start making use of it. This helps for your daily stand up or your tracking the progress or anything that helps like any, uh, definitely from the, even for the team members or the managers or scrum masters, any role, this insights is going to help. Right. The next thing is, again, I'm going back to backlog just for the moment. Here also we have insights, right? So what the insights in the backlog screen helps is use these insights to plan your next sprint. Based upon the current progress or current insights, we can, uh, you, we can use these backlog level insights to plan our next sprint. And here, why no average? Because this is our first sprint. The velocity. Typically, we go and take a look at the velocity report. Instead of going to the velocity report, now we can take a look at the backlog screen itself using the insights. and the issue breakdown of the current sprint. Three issues of stories. One is a bug and one is a task. So let me go to a different uh, project just for a moment to show you that backlog insights. Okay. This project is also not having that. Let me check this. See, this is how, see, we are right now in the sprint four. So when you are planning for sprint five, what it is showing that? 17.6 is the average points completed over the last three sprints. And for sprint four, based upon this, the recommended is 16 to 19 story points. However, the committed is 26 story points. So the tool is telling that you're over target. So no need to even wait until the end of the sprint or even before itself, we are getting to know that during the sprint planning itself, we get oh, we might be over commitment. Hey client, do you want us to refine the revise the or review the priorities? Or is there anything which we might want to take a chance? The client might be saying that we have to take 26 points, but the tool is recommending between 16 to 19 points. So you need to have a conversation with the uh, with your respective manager or client whoever you are interacting with. So, which user story or which story are we okay to take a risk, or are we okay even if any of the story is not completed or still in progress before end of the sprint? How do we want to tackle it? What if the team was able to complete only nineteen? as a recommended or may, maybe max max 20 or 22 for example so how do you want to handle the remaining four story points during the planning or even before going to the planning itself we can have that conversation that is how we can start making use of this information within the backlog within the active sprint itself no need to even go to uh, the reports no need to even uh, generate any jqls or anything the tool itself we started giving the all this information up front directly need to start making use of this for our conversations okay are you good so what do you think will this be helpful this insights or the information which are we discussed you know Yes. 
Okay, so we are already at 12.52. So definitely we won't be able to complete the reports, but yes, do we have anything to uh, ask any questions on the pointers which we discussed till now? Or anything you want to get any clarification, we can discuss. Otherwise, we will definitely schedule another session because we haven't even touched any of the report section or anything. And uh, yes, we can take a look at the reports as required at a later point of time. Yeah, Satish. So let's uh, let's schedule another session. I'll get in touch with you. Uh, let's cover reports. And I'll also like to add, uh, uh, you know, how people can get access to the free Jira version if you can show the steps. Sure. The free Zira version, uh, let me uh, stop sharing and uh, I will create a incognito window because I already have that uh, Zira version enabled. Let me share my screen once again. Let's see in Zira. Right. So I just went to this and it is giving that start your free trial. Right. So once we start that free trial, we can, <clears throat> it is free up to 10 users. It will ask work email. I just gave my Gmail. Need not be a work email itself. Don't worry. Even I got confused initially that do I need to give a work email? My work email is already associated with my of uh, office uh, Zira instance. So how do you do it? You can go ahead and give with your uh, Gmail or any your personal ID as well. Right. So once that is done, what it will do is that it will ask to choose two products. One we already opted Zira software. The second you will have option like Trello, Confluence, or the other Atlassian products. You can choose two products, and you can start your free trial. Right. And up to 10 users, which is like maximum of 10 users, no credit card, no details. It won't even ask uh, any of the details. The moment you cross the 10 users, you will get an alert stating that you started. Uh, now you cross your limit. You will be upgraded to premium, premium version and you will start charging or you need to pay from so-and-so date. I crossed in one of the instance. Uh, so what I did, I went back and I removed the one of the user who is not active for my free version. Then again, it went back to the free. So no need of payment or anything as such. You can, I'm using this for almost two to one of years, this free version. It is not, it doesn't have any time limit. You can create as many um, projects as well. I am just going back to this. See, all these projects I created on the free version. I just created just like that Kanban project, Scrum project, bank, pay, quick ride, mobile, net banking. I just create e-commerce. I just create and play around on my own. And uh, team manage, company manage, Kanban, Scrum. I just create the projects. And I just, what do you say, play around it. Right. And Atlassian University, they started uh, earlier. They have some free uh, courses. Now they added more. I will share this link in the groups and with Shipra as well. Get started with Zira. Get started with Confluence, with service management, Trello, work management, whatever it is. And even not just for that, the admin as well, they are giving the free learning path. Right? Support your flow state. Configure Atlassian for your developer flow. Improve your team collaboration using the Atlassian tools. Optimize your developer. Lots of lots of free information is available from Atlassian University. Make use of it. Make use of it. It won't cover everything, but it will help to get started with see it is a two 2.8 hours beginner 
1.8 hours beginner, 2.9 hours beginner. Start making use of these free information. Along with that, uh, the Z Atlassian community is there. Or once you already created have a project, what anytime I have a doubt, I will go to this help and I will browse complete documentation. It will give us all the information. See, configure a company managed project, create a plan with your Scrum and Kanban, right? Like that. Everything they are providing it directly within the documentation itself with examples, with steps. Let me show, like, uh, see, uh, uh, see, view insights in Zero Cloud. We are, with the, we are discussing just now, right? We, they are showing with the screenshots, with the steps, what it is, everything. This is how I learned all the information which I discussed. Half the information I learned from this free documentation. And other, other half by playing around with the free version of Zero. That's it, simple. Great stuff. Thanks, Satish. So start making use of this free version and the free documentation, free learning uh, tools. That itself will help you like anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, will, I will share this with the group. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Satish. Thanks a lot. Uh, Hope this discussion is uh, helpful today. Yeah. Definitely, Sadesh. It was a very good session. I I have used Jira in the past, but uh, there were certain areas which I've not used as effectively as you mentioned. So I'll start using those as well now. Sure. Uh, Nagaraj, you are saying something? Yes, yeah, Sadesh. It will be very helpful for us. So, like a beginner's for me, like me. So, sure. And I. Uh... Earlier, I did a couple of uh, discussions on the reports. I will share that uh, videos with all of you. You can take a look at it. And again, if you want, we can have another uh, session like this created for uh, reports as well. Any questions or any doubts, how we want to make use of it, how to get the effectiveness of the reports or the information, we can discuss in another session. Yeah, I think uh, uh, it's better to have another one more session, Sadish, if it is possible. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, we will do that. But even before that, I will share the recordings which I already had the discussion earlier. So take a look at this and then you can come back and ask to Satish within this report. Uh, this is the example you have given or is there any other way we can do it? Something like that. Then it will help to have the conversation. Sure, sure. Thanks a lot, Satish. The session was very useful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sure, sure. Thank you, Thanks for. Thank you, Sadish. Thanks, Shipra. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice weekend. You too. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thanks all. Thanks all for joining.